And we start today with central images. Uh, we ask the community to send in images of what they have been gathering around this week. So we take those in now. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, although you're all muted where you are, uh, I hope you'll still join me in singing this Kyrie. Um, the melody will be unfamiliar uh, to everyone, I would guess, but the um, words will be somewhat familiar. And every part of it, um, once you hear it once, it'll come back again. So I think uh, I think uh, it's you'll find it pretty intuitive. So please join me.
In peace let us pray. Oh, let us pray in peace. Let us pray to the Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation. Oh, let us pray to the Lord for the peace of the world. For the health of the church, oh, let us pray to the Lord for this holy house that it may welcome all. Oh, let us pray to the Lord for all those gathered here. For all those kept away, oh, let us pray to the Lord. Through the darkest of night, through the brightest of day, oh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, known and beyond our knowing, you made the world and all that is in it. In you we live and move and have our being. Though the earth reels in pain, you are not far from us. Bear us in repentance for all that is not from you. Call us to bear witness to your saving grace and love for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our reading for today comes from the 17th chapter of Acts. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and I looked carefully at your objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown this I proclaim to you. Here ends the reading. So what is your Twitter witness? What would 280 or less characters in a Twitter message from your life witness to? I decided to do some checking of my own Twitter feed and here's some of the things I found. I bet a few of us could relate to this one. If you're on Zoom all day long, 
is it okay to eat a popsicle during one of your meetings? I mean, it's a long day. Or maybe some of the parents can relate to this. My autistic son says very few words, but today he said hug, and then he wrapped his arms around me. I only cried for about 15 minutes. A few of us church geeks might appreciate this one. When the day of Pentecost had come, there were all together, they were together all in one room. Acts 2.1. Dear church, the spirit is moving. Can you feel it? Or this one. Systems of oppression do not dismantle themselves. Or this one, always look them in the eye so they have to acknowledge you're human. Samantha, Whitefish, Montana, hashtag Black Lives Matter. Or this one that cuts to the chase, why do we hate? Hashtag life's big questions. Digital platforms have flattened our world. And social media is now one among many of our public arenas. For some of us, this is great news. And for some of us, this is absolutely terrifying. Social media makes it possible for anyone without fact checking or adding footnotes to say whatever they want. And every day, all of us are both journalists and our own communication directors. Amateurs and Etsy enthusiasts have as much opportunity to share their ideas and wares as professionals and endorsed leaders. By what we say, post, push, and ignore, we make statements. We make statements about what's important to us and about what we believe. Our networks gain insights into the people we love, the issues that impact our lives, the events that matter to us, and the hobbies that fill our leisure time, all while scrolling through our feed. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm a little more thoughtful about my digital presence than others. And sometimes I just wanna take back whatever I said or posted. Like it or not, the digital age has expanded our public presence. But people of God, our faith has always been public. And being church, both gathered and dispersed, always happens in the world. The God who created us also created this world in which we live. There is no other place but right here and right now to share God's love with our neighbors. And faith lived in public, in the arena where the good for all is of primary concern, where differing ideas are exchanged, and where competing interests live alongside each other. Living faith in this public arena is complex. Many of us were maybe raised to believe that faith was confined to our private lives and to be lived primarily within the walls of our home. This is a distorted view of faith. And not only does it compartmentalize our lives, it also limits the way that God's creative and redemptive love can touch the world. Yet for me growing up, the faith formation in the churches and congregations that I attended did not equip me 
to navigate the complexity of today's public terrain. As you saw, the beginning of this service, the images of our lives from just this past week have been both difficult and ones we want to remember. Some of us started seminary, right? We saw the stack of books, right? Many of them for, for my class, <laughs> sorry. Um, we are starting a new adventure. There are new relationships. There's a particular vernacular and a whole host of patterns and rituals to learn. Can I just have a minute? Can I just take it in and breathe? Some of us have been impacted by the death of George Floyd and the protests and the riots that have been both here in Minneapolis and St. Paul and around the country and around the world. This disruptive moment triggered all kinds of things for many of us. Maybe our own personal memories or experiences. We were exposed once again to systemic racism and all the injustice that are in front of us. And many of us, for the first time or for another time, were reminded these things are not just out there. They are right here in the systems and in the neighborhoods of which we live. Processing that reality, listening deeply to the variety of voices around us, and learning about what was going on took a lot of time and energy. Am I willing and able to keep that kind of energy going? Some of us experience milestone moments, a birth, a graduation, a new driver's license, or the death of a loved one. These quote, ordinary milestone moments are anything but ordinary in the midst of a pandemic. How do we celebrate? How do we grieve? Who can we be with? Who's vulnerable? I know for me and my own network, I know people that have had all of these things happen just this week. And I don't know about you, but I don't know how to be a friend, a family member, a caregiver, a neighbor, a pastor to people in this time and this place. This week, it's been really hard for me, more than normal, to embrace this public nature of faith. I have thought and rethought post of what I should put on Twitter or Facebook. I've hesitated to comment or like other people's posts. And mostly I've remained silent. Paul's Twitter witness to the people of Athens are kind of what we find here in this text in Acts. This tweet-like witness to the Christian faith takes place in the public, in a complex society. With, Peter, with Paul standing on this hill called Mars Hill, this place in this community where religious and moral leaders stand and present ideas and judgments versus for the sake of all of society. And here it is that Paul offers this short and concise little witness to the crowd. He says, I see you're a religious. I even found an altar to the unknown God. And he says, I'm here to tell you, I know that God. A little bit further in his tweet-like um, witness, he says, and this is the God in whom we live and move 
and have our being. Without naming Jesus, without quoting scripture, Jesus uses the context that he's in, finds a public platform, and points to something beyond him and the moment in which he finds himself. I have to confess to you, left to myself, I fail at being my own communication director. My blind spots, my reactive nature, they get me into trouble. My white privilege, it interrupts my listening and it distorts my view. My human nature that wants to care more about myself than my neighbor, it gets in the way of me seeing God active in ways that I don't expect. But here's the good news, people of God. If you're anything like me, then this is what you need to hear today. My public witness and your public witness comes not from what we do. It comes from what God did and God continues to do. We are not the ones to save. We cannot save ourselves, our neighbors, or our society. God alone is the one that can save. And God's love and mercy is a gift. A gift to us that is not a one-time gift, but a daily manna every day. Our public witness is simply a response to God's love and mercy. Because God loved us first, we notice. We care. We hold each other up and we pray. We invite, we show up, we listen, we apologize. We put our bodies in the room and we ask for forgiveness. We can do all of that, not by our own power, but because the power of the Holy Spirit moves in and through us. This week, I could not find the words to express what was going on around me and within me. And I did not know what my public witness was. The images of my ordinary day seem so trivial and self-centered. My conversations were awkward and distressing. So my social presence, my social media presence was silent. Sunday morning as I got up to prepare for worship and a day of teaching, I knew what I had to do. So at the end of that long day, I got in the car with my husband and my daughter and I drove to the corner of 38th and Chicago. I just had to put my body in that place. That place was so much pain, but also this place where people were coming to find healing and their voice. I had to feel the tension, but I also got to see the art and hear the music. Respect all kinds of people who came for different reasons. And then I got to ask myself, God, what am I to learn? How will this form and shape me? And God, what does it mean for me to share your love in this time? To point beyond myself in this moment to the hope that only comes from you. People of God, following the risen Christ changes our lives. It interrupts our personal plans. It breaks open our hearts and it invites us 
to see beyond our human limits. Our lives, all aspects of our lives, become a public witness to this public faith. So today I ask you, what will your life witness to today? Amen. Please sing with me. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy, thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come Just as I am Though tossed about With many a conflict Many a doubt Fighting and fears within Without, O oh Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, Thou wilt receive, will welcome pardon. gather now together for a time of prayer. I invite you to unmute yourselves, especially so that when it comes time to respond to God of mercy with hear our prayer, our voices may join together. We're told how the gospel in Thessalonica brought together many prominent women, community leaders, turn us to their torchbearers, the women, the girls, the non-binary folks, the vocal femmes, those who are at the cross and the tomb and the street who teach us to say enough. God of mercy. Our prayer. Our prayer. Our prayer. Brianna Taylor. Ahmed Arbery. Yvette Smith. Tamir Rice. Sandra Bland. Tony McDade, Tatiana Jefferson, Michael Brown, George Floyd. We say their names in grief. Tears fall like hailstones. Cries against injustice rise with the wailing wind. Growing awareness ripples like thunder. God of mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
So many of us must confess complicity in white supremacy. So many of us carry trauma from living in this broken system. Oppression hastens its own downfall, a toxic, fragile mess first built on shifting sand. May privilege be spent dismantling privilege. Empower us to take action. God of mercy. Strengthen our bodies, God, for the journey ahead. Sharpen our ways to hold people accountable. Quicken our efforts to feed the hungry, protect the vulnerable, provide shelter for the unhoused and displaced. May your gospel shine bright and shake the earth loud in word and deed. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. Faith is never private. In this apocalypse, the veil is pulled back on painful realities and boundless love. Faith is drawn out in public witness and communal action. Open our awareness to our shared power and our true selves, beloved in your embrace. God of mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Our creator, our mother, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, come, your will be done done on earth earth as in heaven. 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 Give us us today today our day of bread. bread. Forgive us our our sins sins as we we forgive forgive those who sin against 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 us. us. Save Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from from evil. evil. For the kingdom, the glory, glory, and the the power power are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me once more in singing. Reminder to meet yourselves. Thank you. This will be another uh, unfamiliar song, but I promise it's real easy to catch on to. Come, come Holy Spirit, come, come Holy Spirit, come, come Holy Spirit, come, sing, sing Alleluia, sing. Sing hallelujah, sing, sing over every king. No matter the fear, know that Jesus is near. No matter the sin. Know that evil won't win, no matter the cost, it was paid on the cross, no matter, no matter what may come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Heal us, thy will be done. Teach us to live as one. Sing, sing, Alleluia, sing. Sing, Alleluia, sing. Sing hallelujah, sing. No matter the fear, know that Jesus is near. No matter the sin, know that evil won't win. No matter the cost, it was paid on the 
cross no matter no matter what may come come holy spirit come come holy spirit come Come, Holy Spirit, come. The God who is known to you through Jesus Christ, the God who loses no one, the God who hears your cries for change, the God who desires mercy and justice, may this God bless you, keep you, guide you, march with you, serve with you, protect you, and give you tender strength this day and all days. In the name of Jesus, amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. A special thank you this day for your prayers and presence offered here. Thank you to Terry, our preacher, Michael, our musician, Madeline, our assisting minister, and Jamie running behind the, sc the screen as a digital sacristan this day. Thank you all for your presence. I know that this is a, a heavy and busy time, and we are stronger when we are together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. God be with you as you study and read and do all of the things you are doing. Go in peace. <laughs>